is Kwon Jae Sung, the next bad boy of karate. Despite only having a little screen time in Season 6 Part 1, he's made an enormous impact in the Miyagi-verse. One can't help but wonder the damage he'll do in the Saikai Taikai. This is why Kwon is dangerous. Let's talk about his road to becoming the number one student of Cobra Kai, his fighting style, his comparisons to the Karate Kid villains, and more. Let's recap what we know about Kwon so far. Feel free to skip ahead to avoid the recap, but be warned, you may miss some important details later on in the video. Kwon Jae Sung is a student in Kim Da Un's Dojang that was overlooked because of his rebellious nature. He tends to think outside of the box and is not a fan of the students sucking up to the senseis, but this causes him and the class to get in trouble because of it. Despite brushing it off, Kwon is confronted by Yoon Do Jin and others, later seeking out Kreese thinking he caused it. However, John instead tells him to put a purpose to his anger, inspiring him to defeat Yoon and take the patch. Kwon soon falls into line, becoming the male captain of Cobra Kai as he and the Dojong are joined by Tori Nichols, their new female captain. Let's first talk about Kwon's journey to becoming the number one student of Cobra Kai. When Kim Da Un introduces her students to Kreese, she talks highly of Yoon Do Jin, as his family has trained with the Kim family for many years. However, Kreese is clearly impressed with Kwon's breaking of the board, as his precise kick aims straight for the head. Despite Da Un claiming that he has always been a troublemaker, Kreese hints that the team is only as strong as their best fighter, a statement he makes while completely focusing on Kwon heading towards his punishment. When bringing up the story of Johnny's loss to Daniel at the 1984 All Valley, Kwon mocks Yoon's answer, but it is later revealed that he had the right idea. There is only one way to defeat an opponent who fights with heart, by being heartless. To teach him a lesson and also to slowly manipulate Kwon, Priest instructs the class to carry two bags of water as punishment. This causes Yoon and others to attack Kwon, angering him and leading him to confront the sensei. Kwon claims to see through Kreese's manipulation, someone he didn't take seriously at first, but Kreese instead inspires him to channel the anger and hate he has inside of him, just like how he taught both Tori and Robbie, and in some ways, how Kenny was taught by Silver. Kwon quickly takes the core principles of Kreese's Cobra Kai to heart. He strikes first, strikes hard, and shows no mercy. This shocks Kim Da Un but satisfies Kreese as Kwon falls in line and becomes loyal to Kreese's instruction, becoming not only the lead student, but one of the captains for the Sekai Taikai. Kwon also fulfills another important part, the title of the episode Sleeper. As I mentioned in my What You Missed in Cobra Kai Season 6 Part 1 video, the term by definition is used to describe something or someone that is unexpectedly successful or important after a period of being unnoticed, ignored, or considered unpromising or a failure. Let's also talk about Kwon's fighting style and his potential as a fighter. Kwon is probably not only one of the most impressive fighters we've seen in the Miyagi-verse, but also one of the deadliest. The first kick we ever see him do even manages to shock and impress Kreese as he aimed for the head. Kwon even manages to say his own parallel of the Quicksilver method. No head, no fight. His hate and anger, like previous Karate Kid villains, give him an edge once he learns to harness and focus it. When fighting Yoon Do Jin, Chung Hee, and Min So, his prowess is on full display. He blocks strikes effortlessly, and when performing his own, strikes precisely to down and disable his opponents. Despite the way of the fist being an aggressive and offense-based style, Kwon clearly shows he's also a good counterfighter, executing brutal and vicious counterattacks against Yoon. Like Chosen, he's also well adept at fighting two opponents at once, executing a blood and bone style kick against Chong and Min. When Yoon strikes Kwon in the back, he's not phased and repeatedly aims for a weak point, the throat. Ending the fight with a somersault kick is easily one of the most impressive moves we've seen so far in Cobra Kai. The fact that Kwon possesses both excellent speed and strength will easily make him one of the best fighters to attend the Sekai Taikai. However, one of his weaknesses seems to be his arrogance and cockiness. If this is exploited, it could easily cost him the tournament. One thing to note is that the Kim family seems to train their students outside, similar to how Daniel trained the Miyagi-Do students in Lowell and Shochu Geiko. Given that even Kreese and Silver trained outdoors, this perhaps helped the way the Fist students improve their awareness, reactions, and conditioning which would explain why students like Kwon seem so impressive. I'd also like to bring some attention to Kwon's actor, Brandon H. Lee. I checked out his recent interview with my friend Peter over at Companion Network, and some information in this interview explains why Kwon brings such a presence to the show. Brandon has studied Taekwondo nearly all his life, as his father is a grandmaster of the style at a dojong in Minnesota. His father was a three-time national Korean champion in the 80s, and Brandon even grew up kicking before he could walk, so to speak. Having a love for all things martial arts such as Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Bruce Lee, and Jackie Chan is part of the reason why he studied Taekwondo 
and he can't imagine his life without martial arts. It's also worth noting that he auditioned for Cobra Kai for a rollback during the production of seasons 1 and 2, but did not make it. Maybe that was for the best, because Brandon already has fans wanting more of Quan in Cobra Kai Season 6. If you haven't already, check out this interview and other great interviews done by Peter and keep up with both his and Brandon's social media. We can't not talk about how Quan has some similarities to his Karate Kid predecessors. Like all three of the Karate Kid villains, Quan studied Tang Soo Do. The key difference here is that Quan studied directly under the Kim family. While Mike Barnes' style is revealed to be Shotokan and underdogs, it's very likely he learned Tong Soo Do while briefly studying under both Crease and Silver, as I talked about in my first Mike Barnes video. Like Chosen, he is revealed to be an antagonist from a different country, and even shares the same arrogance and cockiness. Both Quan and Taguchi are equipped to deal with multiple opponents at once, and I would not be surprised if Quan, like Chosen, studied karate since he was a young boy. Both students were also shown to be taking shortcuts. He also seems to have some of the same ruthlessness that Mike Barnes possessed in 1985. Like Johnny, Quan rises to the occasion as the number one student and even leads the class in training. He also will compete in a tournament, though this time on a world stage, like his Cobra counterparts from the 80s. It's also worth noting that like Johnny, Quan was also manipulated by Kreese. Though not a comparison of Quan to Mike Barnes and Chosen, but rather Brandon H. Lee to Yuji Okamoto and Sean Kanan, all three actors studied martial arts before appearing in the respective parts of the Miyagi-verse. Here are my final thoughts on Quan and what we can expect to see from him in the future. Though we've only seen very little of him so far, no doubt Quan will still be a force to be reckoned with in the Saikai Taikai, and Miyagi-Do will need to be wary of him. There are rumors that he will likely injure someone in the tournament, and I would not be surprised if that's Dimitri because of his overconfidence. However, Quan is also cocky, and maybe that could be exploited by his opponents. From what we saw in Cobra Kai Inside the Dojo Part 1, Quan is shown executing another kick in what seems to be a contest with the other dojos, and is confirmed to be the male captain of the Cobra Kai team for the Sekai Taikai. This may be what gets Miyagi-Do to understand the death of the competition at hand. Only time will tell what the Cobra Prince will be up to in the rest of Cobra Kai Season 6. Quan and Kenny not only studied under different branches of the same dojo, but also were manipulated by their senseis. Kenny used Cobra Kai to embrace his inner rage, and like Quan, quickly became a top student. 